Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have two farmhouse Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Hey y'all, let's get this party started. So to start off, we take these beware signs from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using six all together. I mark it at 16 inches and then I go to my saw and I cut them all down. Now if you don't have a saw, I have very many videos where I take my utility knife and I just score it a few times and the wherever you want to cut it pops right off. But I did use my saw. So anyway, I then just laid them out with the beware part facing up and I stick them all together so it's going to be three on one side and three on the other and then I take some large popsicle sticks and I glue all the seams together. Now I wanted this backing to be covered so I did just cut down a piece of brown paper from Dollar Tree and I cut it as best as I could to size and then I just glued all the way around the edges and trimmed the excess off of the edges. Once I trim the excess once I trimmed the edges, good lord, here we go guys, um, then I take some yardsticks that I got from Lowe's. You can use wooden rulers from Dollar Tree. You will just have to piece them together, but my Dollar Tree literally never has those. So I get these yardsticks as well as stir sticks from my local Lowe's or Home Depot. They're only 98 cents a piece for a pack of the stir sticks or the yardsticks. I measure them out. So for the yardsticks, you won't have to cut them at all for the top and the bottom. I used large stir sticks for the middle piece and on either side and then I used um, the yard sticks for one of the cross pieces that is not cut and then I used um, the large stir sticks for the other cross pieces. Now you guys I'm not good with angles or any of that. All I literally did was hold these up to it and then I took my pencil and I just drew a line wherever the corners meet, if that makes any sense at all. So once I had them all cut, then I did make a diagram for myself and I numbered the back of each. That way when I go to put this all together again, then I know exactly where they go. So my husband was nice enough to take these to his belt sander, but you could use a hand sander or an electric sander. It's totally up to you, um, but I was, you know, trying to get this project done, so he was nice enough to help me. You also don't need a saw to cut these. You can use a small miter saw. Um, like the hand ones but you guys since I've had kids my wrists are terrible I don't know why but it literally kills me to do it next I take my finger sander and I just sand down the edges that were kind of splintered and then I use my Kona stain and I stain all the pieces in the front So I had made this project last year for the Look for Less Challenge, but I did it with wood and I wanted to show you guys a cheaper, much easier way to do it. Plus I wanted to make it a, um, a little bit different than the one that I have. So I did take this farmhouse stencil transfer that I got from my Chalk Couture site. I will leave the information in the description box and my black chalk paste 
and my large handled squeegee and I just transferred this on. I did this on one side and then I pulled it up and then I did on the other side. Now I wanted this to look a little bit distressed so when I squeegeed it on I just sit and press down so hard and then it gives you a really nice distressed look because of course I wanted it to look old and weathered. So with Chalk Couture, I love it so much because you're not going to waste anything. Once you squeegee it off, you can put it right back in your jar and use it next time. Then I just pulled it down and you want to pull just from one side. You don't want to pull it all over. So just pull one side up and then pull it all the way to the end. And literally, you guys, it's like magic. So, like I said before, I did want this to be different. So, for the jars, I did two different types. That way you could see um, what it looks like with both. So, for the first one, I took large ball jars that I got from Walmart. I got a 12-pack for $9, so it was a better deal than Dollar Tree. Because, of course, my Dollar Tree didn't have any jars, and I really wanted to get this project out. So, you can definitely use jars from Dollar Tree, but you are going to get more bang for your buck if you get them from Walmart. So, I just took some Mod Podge and some food coloring. I did two drops of blue, two drops of green, and then you want to add one to two tablespoons of water. You put it in the jar after you stir it up and then you kind of shake the jar around until the entire inside is covered. Then you want to bake it on 200 for 3 minutes and you will have a gorgeous stained glass. So for the other jars, I took my mineral color in Waverly chalk paint and I just gave them two good coats of that color. And then once they were dried, then I took my finger sander, which is linked in my Amazon store in the description box. And I just randomly sanded spots that I thought would look nice, especially around the wording. I just like for that wording to pop off of the jar. That way you can be be able to read what it says and I also just think that the ball jars are just aesthetically pleasing as well which was another reason that I didn't go crazy going to like four different Dollar Trees to find these to find Dollar Tree jars so really it's up to you and then once I sanded down the spots that I liked then I took my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brushed once again random spots around the jar. Also did both jars in the mineral color as well as both jars of the stained glass so like I said before I wanted to show you guys a, a little bit different than just the neutral colors in farmhouse which is my personal favorite but I do know that a lot of people like the nautical farmhouse or you know more of like a modern farmhouse and I do believe that this would fit in with that category so um, I did want to try to bring something a little bit different um, I'm trying to venture out you guys and do different things and things out of my comfort zone so let me know in the comments if you guys like the blue uh, the blue stained glass jars or if you would go with the neutral mineral color so once I had them all dry brushed then I took my jute from Dollar Tree I put a dab of hot glue in the back of the jar and then I wrapped it around a lot of times I don't know exactly how many times but I kind of wrapped it um, missing the threads and then I went back over those threads because it holds better when you have more jute than if you just try to 
go over those threads it'll just pop off and then once I do go back and cover the threads then I do just put some hot glue on there just to make sure that it stays in place nicely. So once I did that with all four jars once again, then I do make four simple bows. I will leave my bow trick video in the cards in the right hand corner if you haven't seen that, but you can get a perfect bow every single time. For the blue jars, I did just like a neutral color bow and then for the mineral color jars, I did a kind of like a burlap color with black trim just to really bring out the black in this little barn door piece. So once I did the bows, then of course I just put a dab of hot glue on the back of each and then glued them in the same spot on each jar in the front. So next we're gonna glue down our pieces after the stain has dried, after our um, farmhouse tile is transferred on. You guys, look how amazing this looks already. When I got to this point, when I got to this point, I was so excited because as usual, I second guessed myself. I really was not sure about this, but once it came together, I was absolutely amazed at how great it looks. I don't even know any other way to explain it, but I took my diagram out. I put them in the spots that they were and then piece by piece, I glued them down. So I started with the bottom piece. I then glue each, I then glued each side down, the top down, and then the middle. And then I glued the cross pieces down just so that way I could make sure that they all fit together nicely. And when I glued them down, they were down because I used Gorilla Hot Glue. So I definitely wanted to make sure that they would fit together before I glued them down. So once they were all glued down, then I took my mini chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint, and I just kind of weathered this by dry brushing all around each edge as well as in the middle of each piece. I just like the way that it looks. After I was done, I was kind of sad that I didn't just leave it um, that brown color. So maybe next time I will not do that, but I'm not mad at it. I still love it so much. So um, let me know in the comments down below if you would do dry brushing or if you would just leave it plain with the stain. <laughs> I was a poet and I didn't even know it. So to attach the jars, that way you can switch them out if you like. Then I took some command strips and I just attach them that way. Like I said, you can switch them out. Now, if you are gonna do one color or the other, then you can always attach this with hot glue and E6000. That way they will stay put and you don't have to worry about them falling or anything like that. So you guys, look how amazing this turned out. I love it so much with the blue, but I also love it with the mineral. So I love the fact that I can switch it out with the seasons. You could make Christmas colored ones or spring colored, you know, it, it just depends. And it's so versatile that you can leave this piece up and have the freedom to change it whenever you like. So if you guys are new here, my name is Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget. I love to take Dollar Tree items and turn them into high-end farmhouse decor. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love it if you would stick around and become part of the family by clicking the red subscribe button. And then you want to tap the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. I also wanted to thank Sharon Denise an anonymous person and Gus and Finney for the coffee. I appreciate you guys so much. And if you enjoy my work and want to buy me a coffee as well, the link is in the description box. 
So moving on to our next project, we're going to make a sign. I took two more of these uh, beware signs and I just cut off about six inches on each of them. That way it shortens these down because I don't want a really, really long sign, but I did want it pretty long and um, it cut off the tag and everything else so that way we could butt these together as well. All I did was took my Arteza little exacto knife i love that thing you guys and i just put my uh, square down and i scored it a few times and then they literally just pop right off once i had them cut then i took my finger sander and i found the easiest way to do this is just lay the beware sign um, so that it's standing up and then just uh, take your sander and go up and down on the side that way it stays nice and straight but it also sands it down for you because when you use a utility knife to cut these the edges are kind of raised and you don't want that on your sign I then just lay them um, butted up to each other and I take large popsicle sticks once again right in the seams and I glue them together I also took another piece of brown paper and I covered the back. Next, I take my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I just fill in the middle. That way you can't see that once you paint it as well. I always like to clean up the edges that way once this dries you don't have so much to sand and I love this stuff you guys it literally dries in about five minutes and then you can sand it down smooth and I give this a light coating of white Waverly chalk paint so that way some of that brown shows through and it looks like it's distressed wood. Now I always clean up my dusty mess when I sand it. I'm just OCD like that. Um, it drives me nuts if I leave it there. So I love to clean up my area 50 million times a day, which is probably why I don't get very much done. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I take my favorite brush and I give it a light coat and then I went on my computer and I printed out the word uh, this little in a cursive font and then farmhouse in uh, more of like a bold font, I guess you can call it. But I will leave the names of this font in the description box in case you guys want to recreate this sign. And I'll also leave the size of the font that I used as well. I then took my square and I just drew a line next to little and then I drew another line right under it because we're going to make a broken arrow so the arrow is going to point to the right and then the tail of the arrow is going to point to the left but you guys I'm not very good at drawing lines I'm not even very good at tracing a line it wasn't completely straight which is fine with me I don't expect my stuff to be perfect so if you want it to be perfect maybe print off an arrow um, I'm not really too sure or maybe you're just better than me and you can draw a better line. <laughs> so I then drew the arrow head and then I just literally drew lines for the tail. I tried to draw like a different tail and I wasn't too happy with the way it looked. So I did just go with a simple um, tail to the arrow. Next, I take my Arteza paint pen, and you guys, I love these paint pens so much, and I'm going to show you why. So, any paint pen that you get from Arteza, they come with replacement tips, because after so long, your tips get worn down, and they dry up, so it's really nice to have extra tips at your, um, you know at your reach so that way you can change it out anytime you have a problem and then of course I go over everything that I traced on with my black paint pen next I take this farmhouse stencil from Chalk Couture and I cut out the cow 
I wasn't too sure what I was going to do, but I really loved the way that this cow looked. So originally I took my black and the color is called Dune. And I kind of like to do like an ombre effect, but I didn't like the way that it turned out. So once I put my chalk paste on there and I squeegeed it off, I pulled the transfer up. And like I said, I didn't like the way it looks. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to just put your transfer back down and just go right back over that with my black chalk paste. I get questions a lot what that cloth right next to me is and it's called a fuzzing cloth before you transfer anything on you always want to fuzz your transfer that way when you pull it up it pulls up really nicely and you don't have to fight with it to pull it up because these are sticky if you don't have a fuzzing cloth all you have to get is a towel that was not washed with any fabric softener and you can can use that and it works perfectly fine next I take my distressing ink and I love this stuff you guys I'm actually new to using this but I did purchase distressing ink as well as the blending brushes from Amazon they are linked in my Amazon store and I just randomly went around and I distressed this sign uh, focusing on the edges on either side and then like I said randomly throughout the sign and literally that was it like I said before I love to take Dollar Tree signs I think that's probably my favorite thing to do or I should say my favorite thing to use and create amazing high-end farmhouse decor I love farmhouse decor so much you guys I'm sure that you can realize that but look how amazing this sign turned out and it did not take me long at all and it only cost me about two bucks for the materials all the other stuff I had in my stash So I started a VIP Facebook group. If you guys want to win this Better Together sign that I made a few videos back, go to All Things Crafty VIP on Facebook, on Facebook or follow the link in the description. So last but not least, I take these candle holders from Dollar Tree. I had two black and one white. The black ones I glued together with some hot glue and then I painted where they met with some Ink Waverly chalk paint just to cover up that white color. And then I dry brushed opposite colors on each candlestick. So for the white I dry brushed black and for the black I dry brushed white and both are Waverly chalk paint. I then took these candle holders from Dollar Tree. I took my blow dryer and I heated up the sticker and pulled them right off and then I took this ribbon from Dollar Tree as well I wrapped it around each of the candle holders and then I made two simple bows and glued them down now you guys I had such trouble trying to um, fill these they are a odd shape and odd size so I tried to put the um, I guess they're like wicker balls into these that I got from Dollar Tree and they didn't look right and I went through all this different stuff and then I remembered that I had these lights from Dollar Tree I got them back at Christmas time and I figured that they would be perfect for the top so I just put four small wicker ball balls at the bottom I know that doesn't sound right I'm sorry you guys but I put four at the bottom of each and then I painted the top of these lights with some ink Waverly chalk paint and then surprise surprise I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush and I dry I just dry brushed the tops of these lights so that was it you guys once I got done dry brushing then I put the lights 
inside of or on top of the candle holders and then I put the candle holders on top of this candlesticks and look how amazing these are I love when a project just comes together like this I was so nervous I couldn't find anything to go inside and it really was a blessing in disguise because I love them so much Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you're still here, leave a green heart in the description box. And I know I get a lot of comments that not a lot of people can leave a heart. So um, just let me know that you're still here. If you're new, introduce yourself. I love chatting with you guys down in the comments section. And I am just so grateful for each and every one of you. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. I'm grateful for you guys and I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to join the VIP Facebook group. Um... Like I said, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for that Better Together sign. So definitely check that out. All, all the information you guys need is in the description box below. So with all that being said, I hope you guys have a great week. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.